Hello, everyone. I am so sorry to be late today. I started to say this morning, but um, it's not. It's afternoon. And even if I was on time, it would still be afternoon. But um, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm running a little bit behind today. I, I'm I'm glad I got in a walk this morning, but it just kind of threw everything else a little bit off. And then technology decided to not be my friend. And so, yeah, we are starting about half an hour late. And I'm um, sorry about that. I hope that these cards are so adorable that you'll forgive me. I have sneak peeks to show you from this month's card club and from the birthday card class for this month, um, as well as I have the three adorable owl cards that I'm going to share with you today. And then I have some other samples to share with you as well. So um, we've got some coloring to do, and sometimes that can take a little while. And we're going to alter one of these cards a little bit too. So um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. And we're starting half an hour late, so I really should get it moving, right? Um, all right. So let's uh, change the camera down and show you what we have, okay? So this is one of our adorable, adorable owls cards today. <laughs> this is another one, and this is the one that we're gonna adjust slightly. And then this is the third. So the adorable owls stamp set is in the celebration brochure, meaning that it is an option that you can choose with a $50 order um, between January 5th and February 28th. So it's right here on page four of the celebration brochures. Lots of fun examples here. And then I've got four more that I'm gonna show you as well. Um, and as you know, a lot of times I take inspiration right here from the, the brochure, from the catalogs, and I want to point out a couple of things about these examples. So with these two, these owls are stamped, colored, and fussy cut. And they are adorable. I love this design. I've seen a few other demonstrators um, start with this, case this, and change it up a little bit. And it is, it is so stinking cute. But... I wanted to share some examples that to show you that you don't always have to fussy cut and that when an adorable stamp set doesn't have dies, that's not the end of the world. We can still work with it. Um, we can fussy cut. It's not too hard to fussy cut or we can use them um, just stamped. So the examples we have today, these are all stamped and colored, right? There's no fussy cutting involved with them. So that is that is one option. Uh, the, uh, the three, no, darn it. The four other examples I have have got some fussy cutting, but isn't this adorable? I shared this in the new catalog launch on Saturday. And guys, that was so much fun. Thank you so much for those of you that were able to join. And for those of you that took advantage of the ordering special, um, I appreciate you all so very much. Um, I am thrilled that we have a, a format to follow in for future lives. And I thank my friend Cindy Westerink for, uh, for putting that together. Um, these are four other cards using these adorable owls. And you can see how a little bit of change in the colors just really changes things up tremendously. They have so much personality. So uh, let's look at, this is our class to go for the week. Tomorrow I will have a, a card on the blog featuring the adorable owls that is also going to be a template, a template that we add to our template library that we're building. So I am loving the way that is going and can't wait at the end of the year to have at least 52 templates to share because we'll have at least one a week. So with our class to go, there's always a class kit that gets sent with qualifying orders. So this is the way that 
looks. You get supplies to make two each of the three cards. Now, if this were a bundle, um, I would not do the die cutting for anything associated with the bundle. It's not a bundle. So whatever die cutting there is, is going to be done for you. For example, in this card, we've got an embossed panel, and then these two pieces are die cut. So you'll see in the, in the make and take, you have the two card bases, you have the two pieces of designer series paper, you have the two panels already embossed, then you have the Calypso coral layers, the white layers that you're going to stamp on, and then you have the, the layer, these two sets of die cuts that are all ready for you to stamp and put together. Uh, now, if your order is over $50, you're going to qualify for a celebration item, and I'm going to include an embellishment with your kit. Now this one is is our is cut this way right now. Now when it goes out, I think we're going to like the adjusted version better, and that's what we're going to send. So there are eight little die cut squares, so four for each, two embossed layers, two white layers for in back of that, two designer series paper layers, and then the two card bases as well. All right, so that is the second card. And then this card, I did bring in a couple of things from um, Conversation Hearts, Conversational Hearts. And so let's look at how that is as well. So you have the two card bases, the two layers of designer series paper. There are two fresh freesia layers, uh, two, two smaller designer series paper layers, this is the white that you're going to stamp on. And then you have the two frames, uh, the two bubbles for you to add your greeting, and then these two smaller bubbles. Those two smaller bubbles have this stamped on them. That is from Conversational Hearts. Um, and I think that if you didn't have conversational hearts, what would you do with this? Well, you might stamp another greeting. You might stamp some little hearts in fresh freesia. We have a lot of sets with hearts. Um, I think you have options even if you don't have that particular set. I try to avoid that kind of situation, but it just worked out that way this time. So that's the make and take kit, make and take kit for this week. And like I said, to each of the three cards um, you will get as a kit to make yourself. And I can't figure out where to put them so that they're out of the way because I have a bit of a mess on my desk. So let's get going, guys. This is actually card three. We're going to start with this guy. And we do have some coloring here, but we're not going to get nervous about that. So while I'm talking, if you all have any questions about the new catalog launch, about any of the specials that are going on, um, anything at all, just feel free to pop those in the chat. And chances are, if you've got a question, somebody else does as well. Uh, we do have a new host code today. You see that down here in the bottom right hand of your screen. Um, we're going to stamp this little owl in um, memento black, and then we're going to color her him out that did not go well okay my my craft ink is in the way I tried to just keep it handy but it didn't work out that way did it so this super sweet little owl where is my set okay so here's the the stamp set it has the three owls and then the three greetings and um, we're even going to do some masking with one of these greetings. we actually have a couple of techniques that we're going to take a look at today but um, again, this is not a stamp set that you can purchase. It is one that you can select when your order reaches $50. That's before shipping and tax and during the celebration period. Seems like I had something else I was going to share and I have lost track of it. So 
it clearly was not important. All right, I'm going to kind of stamp her down in the to the right towards the bottom to give ourselves room for those conversational bubbles that are taking part over here. And I, guys, I love these little conversation bubbles. I think they are going to be so versatile and so much fun. Um, yeah, so give that just a second to dry. And let's talk about how we're going to stamp on what we're going to stamp on these two. So I don't know why I closed this up only to just open it right back up, but that's, that's just the way it goes. Today is that kind of day. It's lovely outside. I'm so glad that Rosemary convinced me to get out there and walk. That was very good. We haven't seen each other in, I don't know, weeks and weeks. Um, so that was, that was nice. Nice to meet a goal for the week. And, um, all right, I'm just kind of roughly getting this in the middle. And I say roughly because I can't, I can't see it's, it's too far out. I'd have to stick my head right in the camera and I'm trying to avoid that. Now this is a really small stamp. It's very easy to rock and get halos, get uneven stamping. I'm trying to really be careful to go straight down and straight up. I think that turned out pretty well. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is a bit of a, I don't know, it might be considered cheating. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I don't hesitate to get my Stamparatus out. And in fact, I have oh, four plate, three, three, three or four plates set up on the floor over here for next week's um, card classes. But I decided I would try something with <laughs> with this particular stamp, and it worked out okay the first time. So we're just going to see if I can do it again, right? What's the worst that could happen? Okay, so this is where I'm going to conversational bubbles, and I'm going to grab this stamp right here. And... And you can see I have not put all my labels on yet. This is still mostly in its um, the way it comes from Stampin' Up. If you ever don't know what to do with that kind of thing, I hope that you'll reach out and let me know so that I can help you out. I'm hoping to do actually a series of videos on that kind of thing. Those things that we kind of forget where the beginning is sometimes and jump somewhere in the middle and somebody has, you know, stamps and they don't know how to, how they're supposed to get the ink on them and transfer it. And so, okay, y'all ready? So I have my die cut. I'm turning it upside down. So the side I want inked is here. I've inked up my stamp set and I'm going to do something crazy like that. Now, it's probably off a little bit. I don't think it's off a tremendous amount, but we'll see. Ready? Moment of truth. Oh, guys, I think that's fine. So that's not going to work every time, but for that little stamp, I think that worked pretty well. I'm okay with it. Now let's quickly see if we can color our little owl and put her together. I had a lot of fun trying to figure out what colors I wanted to use for my owls today. And of course this paper, this paper, I should tell you where this paper is from. It is. Okay. This is the Dandy Designs 12 by 12 paper. And it is a, okay, before I say this, let me just make sure that what I'm about to tell you is, in fact, the truth. It is. It's right here on page 14. And this is free with a $100 selection. It is a huge pack of paper, 48 sheets for each of 12 designs. Guys, that's about a $30 value. Um, so when you think about that, that makes it, um, yeah, 
it's a good value. It's a really good value. Okay, so what are we coloring this guy? Um, I've got a Coastal Cabana base. So I colored her the first time with um, Pool Party and um, Fresh Freesia and Mango Melody. And I think she turned out pretty cute. So I'm going to grab those again. Here's one of my pool parties. Here's a Fresh Freesia. <laughs> and yep, I did throw all my blends over beside me so that I would actually grab what I used the first time. Because sometimes that's a problem. I forget what I've used in the meantime. I'm going to start with her sweet little eyes. And, you know, there's not a ton of shading that can be done in these small areas. But I did think that it made somewhat of a difference to, to add a little dark and then bring in the light. Everybody has a personal preference for coloring with their blends. And we all know things can be done a multitude of ways. So please don't think that what I'm showing you is the only way or the best way. It is my way. And if it works for you, that's awesome. I did take a coloring class uh, with Heather Thomas. She's a demonstrator in the UK. She's on the part of the artisans. Um, and she's phenomenal. Um, make sure. Yes, pool party, pool party. Okay, so what I did for, for this part is, you know, normally, like you just saw me use two shades of the Fresh Freesia. Well, in this case, I wanted to use pool party in both of these areas and make one obviously darker than the other. So I, I did something a little, a little different. I pretty much used my dark pool party over all of this and kind of came back to add in some of the shading. So that, that's a little different. Just have fun with these markers. Um, they are, they are loads of fun. But I think that we can easily intimidate ourselves. So what's everybody else up to today? Harden had the day off school yesterday, so we, of course, we had a doctor's appointment because that's what you do when your kid's in high school, right? You make all the appointments on the off days. And we were out at St. Thomas, so we went to Trader Joe's because that's convenient over there. We have some big chocolate bars that we love from there. And okay, so now for this one, we're going to do the same thing, come back with the light pool party in the area that we want light. And then we'll worry about shading. Now, actually, this is a, a technique that some people follow, they do all of their light and then blend in their dark. So that is absolutely okay. Um, keep in mind that your color will blend best if it is not completely dry. So work in small areas. Hi, Sherry, we're so glad to see you today. Um, Thank you. Um, we are loving the owls as well. Oh, Siri thinks I called him, her, whatever. Uh, all right. So Pam said she got in her order, and that is super exciting. I'm just adding a little more dark to those areas that I want to be dark. I run nowhere. <laughs> I don't 
think that's quite true, Pam, but okay. So I'm just gonna add a little dark there and around the beak. Maybe up here. Just have fun with it, guys, truly. Just have fun. That's the only rule that there is, so that you have fun. And then I'm gonna come in with some Mango Melody and And I started to say, you know, mango melody, surely an owl's feet wouldn't be that feet and beak wouldn't be that color. And then I realized <laughs> I just colored a purple tie on a um, pool party owl. So maybe the fact that its feet aren't realistic really doesn't matter. And I was reaching for another color and oh I know. I wanted I, I want well hmm. Okay. And I gave the owl purple ears and purple eyes. So, you know, I'm stressing about the feet, really. Okay, so I, before I do that, I'm going to just put the base of my card together. Super, just, guys, just some layering. This is just, when all else fails, no, not even when all else fails. Turn to your paper and let it talk for you. Okay, and but be careful of what your um, what your seal will say when it gets to the end, Liz Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, you, hey guys, you've heard me say that this whole row of my cabinet is adhesive. It is. These two drawers are both adhesive replacements for the seal. <laughs> um, and actually one of them is getting low and I need to order some more because that must be my greatest fear is um, that I run out of adhesive and I just set that right down in the, oh my gosh, okay, I'm clearly gonna have adhesive everywhere now. Um, easy enough to change out. Normally I do take this opportunity to you know, get any gunk off from there. And then line them up and pop it back together. And then roughly even this out. And usually it's the bottom that gets cheated. All right. <laughs> oh, Sherry. Um, I try, um, but it uh, it's not it's not perfect by any means. But I I am very blessed. The, a friend of mine gave me this cabinet. It came out of the Genesco plant here in Nashville when the plant closed. My friend's dad was working from working there, and he knew that it had a big future. So they held on to it for quite a while. And then when um, Bobby died and my friend and her husband were um, doing some work around the house, they realized that, oh, there was somebody they knew that would love to get the, give that a new home. Okay, so these, okay. I should show you this a little bit better. Um, hold on. I'm going to grab the dies. Because I want to show you how these cut out and why I did what I did. So this die. You're seriously from Cookful? Oh my goodness. Wow, that is the smallest dang world. You are not too far. I'm in Gallatin, so Sumner County. Um, not far at all. All right, so this die cuts out both the frame and the inner parts 
at one time. So I ran it once and got the purple frame and a purple inside. And then I ran it again to get a white frame and the white inside. And then I used the purple frame and the white inside for this card. And I will save all these pieces for another one. But really cool how this goes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm beyond blessed, Sherry. This, this cabinet has 90 drawers. <laughs> and they are each seven and a half inches wide and um, about ten and a half inches deep. So, and then I'm just going to put this like so. I'm going to pop this little guy up on dimensionals. And I could use a big one here, but the little ones were within reach. And so that's what I ended up using. And I'm just going to overlap that a little bit. And then I have to tell you, so see these little marks right here on this sheet of dimensionals? Somehow or another, I guess I was working downstairs and then I left, oops, I left the sheet of dimensionals down there and the cats got them a little bit. They were rescued because that's the only evidence. It's that little area. I'm not even going to un peel the backing off of that center one because I don't need it for stickiness. I need it for support. I don't want any saggy middles. And there you go. Now we need some bling on this and there's so many choices in bling, but I'm going to use iridescent rhinestones. Um, but I was really drawn to the in color Opal rounds, you know, I've used those quite a bit recently, kind of didn't even know they existed, you know, but I shouldn't admit that, should I? Well, I just did. Um, oh my gosh, where are you going, buddy? So runaway, runaway rhinestone here. There. Yeah, I, I don't typically allow the cats in here. But I cleaned up, I ran the vacuum, and, um, you know, I got kind of used to everybody, you know, my husband being home over Christmas and our son being home over Christmas. And it was quiet. So once I ran the vacuum, I kind of let them in here. So, all right, that is card number one. I think it's super cute and colorful. I hope y'all do too. Now let's look at card number two. It is the one that we're going to modify. And okay, so this was actually designed uh, by an artisan. And anytime I see something that is an artisan design that I think I can actually replicate, I'm on it. So that's what we have here. We have a thick basic white layer. We have a sheet of that DSP from that same pack. We have a white layer, a melon mambo layer that's embossed. And then we have the four die cut squares. These are from Stylish Shapes. I'm going to stamp those. But I want to talk about this piece first. Um, I don't know that I really did what the artisan did or not, but I did it. So I'll tell you what I did. Um, I took a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock and my craft ink pad, so white whisper, let's whisper white, craft ink pad. And I'm going to show you on a different folder and actually a different color of cardstock. But what I did was I took my ink pad, ignore that this is a little pink, that's a, another story. And I inked it up like this. Don't anybody, you know, don't freak out or anything. This is this is really safe to do. It just rinses out. I laid my cardstock in it, and then I ran it through the cut and emboss machine. So let's do that. I need to turn that this way. And let's see if I've got my... Sometimes it takes a little bit to figure out the plate. This is the 
splatters and stripes. Oh, it's from the annual catalog. All right, so oh, that is really tight. Let's try. Let's try this one. Um, different machines are they're all different, so don't be afraid. And that one has no resistance at all. Okay. Don't be afraid to mix it up. All right, I don't know that I'm getting any resistance at all over here. I might have to switch to the big machine. I might just have to stand on it because what I want you to show is to show you real well. All right, hold on. Should be able to do a four. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did wrong. I need to use the dark gray and the number one, not the clear plate at all. I made that mistake not too long ago. Oh, so much better. There it goes. Yeah, it's a cool, cool thing to do. Okay. And now, how cool is that? Right? And, you know, you can ink up either side and get it, get you know, get the ink pushed in or on, on the raised part. Yeah. It's a really cool thing. And then just throw this in your sink and rinse it off. And it's, it's good to go as soon, as soon as it dries. So that's how we got that wood grain melon mambo piece. And, um, oh, and, you know, by the way, this is that boho blue machine. Um, I, I am in love with it. And if your craft room needs it, ask me about it. I'll be glad to tell you how we got it. Okay. I feel like I don't have one. I don't have enough of the mango melody showing around the edge. And two, I, I measured a half an inch up to put my, my, these bottom two guys, but I meant to go half an inch of the pink. So they're down too far too. So we're going to trim, do a little trimming all the way around and we'll stamp in a second. All right, so first we're gonna take a quarter of an inch off of the white. Okay, so, and I'm going a quarter of an inch this way. Our trimmer is so awesome like that. And a quarter of an inch. So up to an inch and a half, you can go to the right. And that's awesome because I've got all of this edge to line up um, and keep, to keep it straight. Uh, if I were to go like a quarter of an inch this way, it, it would be really easy. It's not as stable, right? But if I go a quarter of an inch over here, it's, it's, I think stable is the word I want to use. So I'm going to go with that. All right. So we've taken a quarter of an inch off of that. So that should all still be the same and fine and well. And we can adhere them together. So you can see that's the Melon Mambo just embossed. And there it is with the, the Craft White ink. We are using Craft White ink in the Milkshake class on the 28th as well. So I'm, yeah, okay, stay. And I typically don't work with a white piece of grid paper. I need a little more contrast, but. There we go. That's got that piece. And we'll put this piece down. Isn't that pretty on the other side? We use that in the first template. 23001. So the first card template of the year used that print of this paper. All right. And I I did not put this on dimensionals. It's got a lot of layers. So I just didn't. Hey guys, if you see my niece Savannah today, wish her a happy birthday. She is she is 28 today. She is working. She's working in Nashville. I think she's working today, actually. She might have taken the day off. 
given herself a long weekend. That'd be a very smart thing to do, wouldn't it, huh? But I don't know that yesterday was a holiday for her, so. All right, now, that's all right. I think that's a lot better, right? Uh, yeah, I, I like that a lot better. Okay, now let's stamp our little owls. Should we do the tricky part first? Yeah, let's go ahead. Um, okay, so, hoot hoot, you're so cute. Well, our stamp says, hoot, hoot, you're so cute, and it's two lines, and we broke that into three. So how do we do that? That is called masking, and it's not hard, but it requires patience. I use Post-it tape. I get this from Amazon. Um, it comes in a pack of three rolls, and I've been using it for quite a while, and I've not reordered yet, so... Ugh. I think it was worth it. Um, don't see my black ink. All right. So I am going to do the, the hoot first. So I'm just going to mask off the parts that I don't want ink on. And what else do I tell you? Okay, so today is the 17th. The 19th is the last day to register for the birthday card class in January. And we are using the, can you see? But inked up just that one word. Um, using the Share a Milkshake bundle in that class. And then the 20th is the last day to subscribe to Card Club. So I inked up the one on the right. So that is the one that I have stamped. All right, and I can do that again. And I've tried to, you know, recycle that, that piece of masking tape, but I end up just getting black all over myself. So um, myself, my card, everything smudges. So it's, better just to toss it each time and then I'm just gonna I'm really not trying to be precise you know if it goes cattywampus that's okay with me all right now see if I can do I think I've got that covered I do have a craft day this Friday. Oh my gosh, do you know what I just did? I knew I should have cleaned that stamp. Okay, when I take this off, that hoot is going to have left a second shadow there. So, mm, yeah, now, no need to panic. I don't think this will work. I think I've got too much, but this eraser sometimes erases ink. I needed to clean off the hoot because even when I, even though I didn't ink it up when I masked this guy off, um, there was still ink from where I stamped it down and I forgot. So yeah, I've got to redo it. Just all there is to it. So I'm going to borrow All right, borrow a square from the kit that's already ready. And darn it, it was going so well. Clean this guy. I can't believe I. Okay, you know what? That's fine because otherwise you might have made that same mistake yourself. And um, now you know. It is very real. Oh my gosh. 
So 28 years ago, when Savannah was born, she came early. Um, and I was newly pregnant with um, my son, Marshall, sick as a dog and traveling for my job. And so I think she might have even been born on a Monday that year because I flew out to North Carolina where I was working without any idea that anything was going on. And this was back in the day. There really weren't a lot of cell phones at that point. And I was so, so sick. I went to my hotel room and actually laid down for a while. The only thing I could eat at this point in my pregnancy <laughs> were egg noodles with a little butter and that gross Parmesan cheese in a can. Uh, yeah, it was yuck. So that not evening though, I'm trying to call my family, check in with them after work. And I can't get a hold of anybody. Nobody's answering their dang phone. Well, turns out Savannah had been born and I was far away. That was kind of sad. All right, there we go. Hoot, hoot, you're so cute. Nope, leave that open because we still got to stand for owls. There are seven months between Marshall and Savannah. And that has always been so much fun. And we're just going to stamp each owl a little differently. Not too worried about, there's no, no such thing as perfection here. I just want to, just, um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, except that every block has a little bit of an owl, not the whole owl. Now the artisan stamper that I cased this from, her owls are quite a bit lighter. So I'm not quite sure what colors she used, what combination. Uh, and Okay, but I like the grays okay, so I'm going to leave the grays. Marshall was a very chill baby. Savannah was not. And we only lived about half a mile apart back then. And Savannah would tell Marshall, actually she'd tell him by giving him, when it was time to take her pacifier away, well, she decided he didn't need his anymore either. And, uh, but she was rather nervous about not having a pacifier. So usually there were two or three in her hands at a time. It's a good thing she doesn't watch, right? She might be a little, she might be a little upset with me for sharing all her secrets, huh? If you have been stamping with me for very long, you might remember that Savannah served as nanny when Hazel, my granddaughter, was a baby. My daughter worked second shift at the Gap, and she would drop Hazel off on her way into work that in the afternoon, put her down for her nap. I was working a full-time job, and... Hazel would nap, and then Savannah would be here. She had recently graduated from Ole Miss, not yet moved to New York. So Savannah would get her up from her nap, and she would play with her, and then she would feed her, and she would bathe her. And then I would take care of the rest of the family. Um, read a book to Hazel and put her down, 
when it was time for her to go to bed and my daughter would come the next morning and get her and then we would repeat. It was a very, very special time. Hazel is now five. I think she's going to make cookies with me later this week or with Harden and me. All right, guys, I'm not paying attention to comments, I will admit, as I color here. All right, let's do pool party eyes for these guys. Have to, yeah. So Savannah's, Savannah's very special. The next people that helped me with Hazel didn't do quite so much for me. <laughs> I was very spoiled. All right, so I think we've gotten everything done except the gray. Are we okay with the gray? Now, Hazel, um, Savannah's not in New York anymore, Pam. She um, she was there, and then COVID hit, and um, she came home. She came went home when that happened, and she works. She works downtown. Has an apartment in Germantown. All right, I'm I'm not so sure that I've got the right gray going on here, but we're going to work with it. I've colored one purple. Why can't one be gray, right? Gray is great. Okay, thank you, Joyce. If Joyce says it's so... It is so. She knows. And we'll just do some light gray on the inside of her ears. There's that one. And then this one. I go probably, I probably color a little faster when I'm on camera like this, not paying as much attention as I do when it's just me. Coloring is very relaxing. <laughs> I did not expect it to be. You've all heard that before probably. Right, I'm trying to decide. All right, got a little dark down here. Okay. So Stampin' Blends are sold as a duo. So when you get, they're at, they're nine dollars for the pair, and they they're alcohol blends. As long as you seal them up after you use them they will last um, a good long time and I think most of us probably the dry, the light runs out first because we use more light typically than we use the dark I use the blunt end far more than I use the the brush end, the the brush end is very fragile, and if you're coming at something from the side, you can probably control that. But the uh, the tip the tip is really easy to damage. If you're working in a large 
area, then coloring from the side with your brush is, um, would probably go faster and is probably fine. Isn't she sweet? I think it's a she. <laughs> when you only get part of the image, it's a little tricky to figure out um, where. Okay, we're going to say that. We're going to say that I'm not quite sure. How about that? This part needs to be dark. So the last time I colored on camera, I um, was right before Christmas, and I told everybody that, you know, for Christmas we were going to go to um, Michigan to visit our family. Well, the problem is our family doesn't live in Michigan. We have lots of friends in Michigan. And Michigan would have been fun, but we actually went to Missouri. Um, that was just a... Yeah, that was just a slip. Um Okay. And then those dry a little bit, um, the color will change. You can come back and add. Uh, if you want to make a stark contrast, then um, let your colors dry and then come back. Like when I'm doing Hazel's curly hair, I let the hair, I do it all in one color, blend it, and then I let that dry for some time before I come back with the, um, the marker and add some curl. All right, now I'm going to use my grid paper and I want to come up roughly half from the pink, which is going to be like so. And I'm going to put these in. All right, I need some, I need some dimensionals. One would probably hold these just fine. I'm just going to use two because I just do. Uh, don't need them on top of each other. So today is my husband's last day at a consulting assignment where he's been since October. He's working in Red Bull and Springs, which is about 45 minutes, 45 miles from our house. And they threw a party for him yesterday. They made um, homemade cupcakes, um, Homemade strawberry cupcakes, strawberry banana cupcakes. Um, there were homemade pimento cheese sandwiches. I mean, this was really, really nice. This is for, you know, their consultant. It was just so, so nice. They have been, they've just been really nice. Um, I'm hoping that some of them are really crafty. So I'm hoping that some of them will start, um, following along and craft with us a little bit too. All right, now I'm just gonna line those up there. One of them uh, had a cricket, has a cricket, and she cut um, motorcycles out of like a, a glimmery, a glittery black uh, cardstock. And those were the toothpick um, picks, toothpick, you know, in the cupcake picks. Is that what you call them? Okay. Well, that looks, you know, it doesn't look perfect. It, um, that's okay. All right. We are going to use the milky dots. So, and this would have been, this would have been a pretty cool on this card 
as well. But I didn't use that. So, but you could, if you've got these, yeah, yeah, you could. I could probably use these on all three cards now that I'm looking at it. But anyway, let's add some. Okay, come on, take your pick tool. Come on, pick it up. I'm going to slide that one there. And another big one there. And another big one up there. And then a small one. And a small one. So pretty cute. What do y'all think? I would definitely like the one that's got more background showing better. That's yeah. Okay. But if y'all differ, please let me know. Um, you're you know more than entitled to have your own thoughts about it. Okay. The last one, this is cased from Melissa Faust. Melissa is a young demonstrator and she is, she's so gracious in sharing her knowledge. And um, I, I just thought this was too cute. I love the way she, I don't know, I love the way she offset this layer a little bit. I just, I just had to do it. I didn't color my owl the same as she did, but I think for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Um, I don't think I used the same embossing folder, um, but that's um, okay. We'll go ahead and stamp this guy. Oops, sorry, that made a big sound. I colored this one in crumb cake and a granny apple green with, um, and I gave her, him, blue eyes. And there is a, um, there will be a written tutorial available. So when you get the make and take kit free with your purchase, you also get a link to the written instructions. And if you want just the written instructions, uh, next week they should be available for purchase in my um, tutorial store. I have been working to build that store over the last several weeks. And those tutorials are free to members of my team. And... When I first introduced the store, I offered a coupon to those on my newsletter list so that they could save $5 on them. And so we are, yeah, we have a template store now. Template, not a template store. The templates each week are in the blog post, linked in the blog post. And you can grab them and, oh, okay, so that's the brush end. And I most definitely don't want to do that on this card. Okay, I want to get this one pretty dark because then I want this layer to be light enough that there's a contrast. Okay, and now crumb cake is what we have left. So there, um, the tutorial will also include all the supplies that I've used. Um, And I just, I feel like I'm a little discombobulated. It happens, doesn't it? So we'll do.
So your, bl your blends are going to bleed through. And the more layers you add, of course, the more bleeding you have, but the more blending you have as well. Um, so don't be afraid when it bleeds. We just don't... Um, What am I trying to say? Um, when we color with our blends, we just use a you know something behind it so that the it's not showing through. Um, and I discovered when making Christmas tags that the craft paper that we have um, they don't bleed through on it. So. Crumb cake is such a gorgeous color. I love the eyes on the owls. I want to do a um, do you remember the owl from the Tootsie Pop commercials? You know, how many licks does it take to get to the center? I think that this owl would make such a cute valentine with the Tootsie Pops. Um, so I want to work on that. Hazel's not in a program right now other than at church. To need Valentine's for friends, but I just think you could. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't take good enough notes when the idea hit me. All right. So now we just need to stamp our greeting in Granny Apple Green and assembly and we're done so have i answered all your questions I, I feel like i've just chattered but maybe disconnected you know saturday was an awesome day uh, but it was a lot of talking there were six live streams where, where we reviewed the products in both the the new mini catalog and the celebration brochure and shared so many ideas, talked about what's coming up. So, and I will, all of those videos are still available in the Facebook group and on YouTube. And why is this not quite, okay, this is kind of like the same size. There should be a little bit of, um, I can't make this bigger, so I'm going to have to make this smaller. Uh, <laughs> oh my let's see I'm going to take off okay, 16th for there and I'm going to take off a full 8 at the top and the 16th on the side. Now let's see if we got it. Um, the videos are still available in the group and on YouTube. All the posts are numbered. So if you missed Saturday, the door prize is, um, those are not, those are closed. Now I need to turn commenting off. I'll do the drawing um, this week and then send out prizes. And, oh, I'm so glad. That's it, so good to hear. Thank you, Joyce. Um, okay, stay put, guy. While I try and center this up.
it was, um, Saturday was a lot of fun and we'll do it again when the new annual catalog comes out May 1st. So we've got from now until then to recover. All right, I'm coming in about a quarter of an inch and about a half an inch and then, well, not quite a half because I want the bottom to be I want a larger border on the bottom. And then again, a lot of layers. So I am not going to put dimensionals on this piece. A lot of times I would. And then we have this gorgeous geometric design to help us line up. Still may not, but you know, it tried. Boy, that is not straight, is it? It's okay. Oh, I got hold of one of the cat ones. And there's that. And then Okay, just for giggles, we're gonna come use the, the milky dots from here. And I think that's really the same size, but. So just to show you a different embellishment. Your kits don't come with embellishments, but there are, you know, so many to choose from. Um, if your kit's over, if your order is over fifty dollars, then yes, I will send you an embellishment. But because we use multiple, it's not always going to be the same one. All right, let's. Okay, hold on. What am I doing? There. There we go. All three cards from today. Thank you so much for being here. If you subscribe to the blog, that blog post will go out this afternoon. And then there'll be another blog up tomorrow with a new template featuring the a new card template featuring the adorable owls. And then you have until Friday to place your order and qualify for this make and take for free. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you very much. And I hope that you have a very blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.